Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Welcome to a Champions League breakdown for the main slate on February 19th and 20th, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, for this midweek slate. I'm really excited about this slate. Once again, we're presented with a r- bunch of really different options that we're going to be able to take stands on. Champions League in general is really exciting because we're always presented with some huge names in particular this slate is a Ronaldo Messi slate so that's going to immediately draw massive ownerships to both players and while both players are excellent plays in their own right neither really warrant lots of GPP exposure this slate so I'll get into that a little bit here Uh, first let's uh, just take a quick look at the schedule we have Barcelona making the trip from Spain into France to play Olympic Lyon Uh, the next game is Bayern going from Germany into Liverpool to play Liverpool, which is a really interesting game. Man City making the trip from England into Germany to uh, Schalke, and Juventus making the trip from Italy into Spain to play Atletico Madrid, who actually hosts the final game. So uh, that just means the final of Champions League this season will be played at Atletico's home stadium. Whether they make it or not, it's obviously yet to be seen. But uh, yeah, let's jump right into this. First game on the slate, we have Barcelona traveling to Lyon. Um, I'll just start right off the hop, jump right into this. Barcelona are probably not going to win this game. I know that's not a popular take. That's not what a lot of people are going to take a stand on. But this is where you can actually immediately divide yourself from the majority of the ownership and start to go a little bit of a different direction for either format. Now, a lot of that stands on the notion that Lyon have done well enough at home this season, both at at domestic and uh, in uh, Champions League, where uh, we can look at a, a different type of edge where not many people immediately look at them. And on top of that, they're going to be missing some players, which may their player pool extremely dense uh, just making them all around incredible plays and truth for either format uh, so we can generally start with Barcelona the one thing that Barcelona does have going for them here is just uh, uh, as, away from home Ter Sturgeon has seen enough saves to warrant consideration for really either format. Uh, it isn't my favorite play this slate. I'd probably keep it to just GPP and hope that maybe they're able to get a clean sheet on Lyon, which I really don't see coming anyways. But as a whole, uh, I, I do see Lyon scoring, so I'm not necessarily jumping on the opportunity other than maybe uh some really see the the issue is his salary is so high that you need a clean sheet and you need him to finish with at least top three save numbers out of all the keepers of slate so uh, it isn't really my favorite play but i again it's going to draw some unnecessary square ownership so uh, i see the obvious value in uh playing a barcelona goalkeeper away from home who's a being uh, allowing a ton of shots on that Barcelona is so yeah I really don't mind that notion but other than that that's really where I'd stop with uh, that type of Barcelona play um, you could the main issue with Lyon is that they don't have any real defensive options for any kind of a solid floor play and Barcelona conversely cost so much that they need to really go off in order to be the best plays of the slate and Lyon at home isn't really the place to target that uh, Barcelona at home absolutely we could look at that and this would be a completely different conversation and they are Barcelona so it's never to say that they can't but they're still going to draw all the ownership saying that they can when they necessarily won't so um, yeah I really don't I'm really not looking at Jordi Alba or Sergio Roberto or if a Semedo starts on the wing back. I'm not interested in Rand. I'd rather go the Man City defensive center back side than chase the Barcelona. Um, Barcelona are going to score from somewhere. It's just a matter of picking out where. Now, whenever we look at the midfield and forwards, I'll break it apart this way. I'll, I'll talk about the the main talking point is Coutinho and Cash if you're looking to play Barcelona. Uh, I'll talk about why not Messi here in a second in cash. But uh, in terms of cash, yeah, Coutinho is where you'll want to go with Barcelona. He hasn't been necessarily good enough with the ceiling all season, but his salary and his floor represent the same kind of floor that you'll find with Messi and his salary. Uh, so it isn't the worst play of the slate. Be a little bit less owned, a nice little pivot. I don't expect a lot of goals this game. 
So unless Messi scores the goal for Barcelona, he's going to really struggle to outpace all the other people from his salary because there's 9K guys who should absolutely smash this slate where you're looking at Messi from 11.2. I do believe I want to say the most expensive player of the slate. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it, it, it's tough. He is playing very well this season, but this game doesn't necessarily direct the ceiling coming from uh, any kind of, or direct a script, excuse me, uh, coming uh, towards the ceiling for Barcelona. Uh, too much ownership and not enough uh, sharp plays, where on the other side of the field, we have Lyon, um, who I think have tons of different options, whether you can look at the back and look at uh, Lopez as your keeper option, the slate for only 4.1K and looking for four to eight fantasy points on DraftKings and hoping the idea that he comes out and doesn't allow more than two goals. If he keeps it under two goals, he should see enough saves to do well. But if he gets uh, allows in three or more, that's when you should start to be a little bit concerned. Now, Leon Holm suggests that Barcelona shouldn't score more than twice while at the same time getting around four to six shots on net. So I really don't mind Lopez as a keeper play this slate. Uh, probably one of my top three keeper plays. Uh, in terms of defense, like I mentioned, Barcelona is too expensive and Lyon really has nothing. Uh, Dubois is really one of the only options of viability, but at the same time, him and Tete play the exact same position. So neither of them will be playing at the same time and neither of them are dynamically good enough to change a slate, uh, whether in cash or GPP. So you can safely fade the Lyon defenders unless you want to chase something like a, a center back goal, which even then could be a little bit tricky. Uh, Lyon as a whole generally sub a lot, which is a concern, and they generally play different players, uh, and the, they don't play, excuse me, the same set uh, team every single time. So uh, it, it can be tough figuring out who you want to use. Now, uh, the two people attack-wise that I'll be looking at for Lyon this slate would be Aror and GPP. I think he does have some value. Uh, Terry Aaron GPP is another guy I'm really considering. I don't even mind this in cash because with Fekker out, he should see 90 minutes for him, only 4.6K at home. Uh, Lyon are very... I'll, I'll finish up with that point, sorry. But uh, I think uh, Terry Aaron makes a lot of sense this, this slate if he starts from 4.6K in either form format just because he's so cheap you really don't need very much from him six fantasy points and you're flying eight and you're absolutely set so yeah that and that's not a huge ask uh from a 90 minute game at home from a leon player uh now really the play from this game is going to be uh, Memphis Depay at uh, 6.6K on DraftKings. With Fekker out, Depay should get absolute exclusive set pieces rights for uh, Lyon. Now, Barcelona are a team that go out and allow a ton of different uh, set piece floor plays or allow the corners, but at the same time, uh, you can kind of luck into this from 6.6K. I do see a, a slight concern of his floor hitting more likely than the ceiling, but the ceiling is there to happen. So I have absolutely no issue with the pay, 6.6K. Definitely one of my top five core plays this slate. Get him into your cash cards. Uh, you don't want to miss out at him and the salary at home. Now, really, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, you can finish up with a, a lot of these different names as long as you can try and find a 90-minute guy who will be playing ahead of a substitute who probably won't see the field now with Fekker out that gives Depay 90 minutes that gives Terrier a really good shot that gives Dembele a really good shot at 90 minutes all these guys are super viable this slate to finish all this up the reason that this is a trap game for Barcelona and that a lot of people are really concerned over Barcelona's ability to find a result this game it isn't the saying they can't it's Barcelona Lyon play a really counter-attacking style. They're, they're literally built around teams that like to try and play possession and play tic-tac-toe passes through them for them to pick off and break really quickly and find success through set pieces or through uh, counter-attack goals. And Barcelona get absolutely shredded by this. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Barcelona lose possession and Lyon get a lot more attacks in than a lot of people are expecting. And I also expect Barcelona to be one of the more square plays this slate. Now, that again 
isn't to say Barcelona can't. They're Barcelona. It's messy. It's, it's some incredible different plays across the board. So I'm not suggesting that Barcelona are bad plays. I'm just saying that uh, this slate lines up, which allows you to take the other side of the Barcelona square play, which should be in a mass uh, ownership this slate. So I think the final score here will be a 1-1 draw between Lyon and Barcelona. Maybe a 2-2 if we're lucky. Uh, but even then, see, that's the issue. It could be it's Barcelona. It could end up being 3-2 or 3-1 if they luck onto a messy penalty shot or something like that. So uh, it isn't the, the game I'm looking for the ceiling from this slate. But at the same time, conversely, Lyon's salaries and ownership allow them to do a lot more damage uh, from, from only one goal, where Barcelona will need three. Uh, so yeah, I'll say 1-1 draw, maybe a 2-1 Barcelona win, and that still won't be enough for Barcelona to really pay off this slate. Next game on this slate, we have Byron traveling to Liverpool. Another incredible opportunity here for uh, people to take some really different interesting takes in uh, take some takes in some different uh, formats here. Uh, let's start with Byron. Um, basically, they're going to concede. They're probably going to concede more than once. And there's even a pretty decent opportunity that they're going to see concede more than twice. They haven't been the same defensive side this season. They've been lacking over the past few seasons, and the cracks are really starting to show this season. Neuer has been letting in more shots, and he's been saving for consistently throughout the entire season. So he's a risk. The double digits were there. They've definitely fallen off. Um this is a lot more to do domestically than it has to do Champions League. Now, when you we consider the Champions League, um, they have had a, a relatively easy schedule with Ajax, uh, AEK, and Benfica, three other teams that probably didn't necessarily deserve to be in Champions League this season, and all three probably would have done just as, or much better in the uh, Euros. Uh, so... Yeah, it isn't necessarily where I'm looking to make my definition their Champions League, where conversely, in their domestic, uh, they've been really poor all season. They're not in first place. They're shown repeatedly that they're not the team of the past. Leverkusen beat them half recently, who's a, the uh, young and up-and-coming team. So, yeah, it's not to say that Byron can't do things. Uh, they're probably going to They're probably going to score once. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see Hummel score a goal. He always tends to show up a little bit more in these bigger games because he is one of the best players in the world, uh, indisputably uh, one of the best center backs in the world. Uh, this is where things get interesting. This slate, you'll notice, especially in DraftKings, there's a few pay grades or salary grades that are absolutely decimated by injuries. So what this is doing is it's creating a lot of gaps where there isn't a lot of value yet necessarily this slate. So guys like Terrier may be extra necessary because there's no other value options. On top of that, all the median range guys you would kind of fall on for a balanced lineup are also going to be out for either format. So a lot of the balanced names this slate are going to be missing, and that's tough. And it makes different guys a little bit more valuable. Uh, so, yeah, if for Byron, someone like James Rodriguez, you can absolutely get away with in cash, despite the team potentially losing upwards of three to one. Uh, the reason for this again is kind of the the Lyon. They're six point nine k. They're under seven k. There's pay grades that are cut out, so it makes him a little bit more valuable valuable from an under eight k high skilled player who's going to see ninety minutes because the rest of his team is so injured. And basically across the board here for Byron, you can pick different names because they're going to play ninety minutes because uh, everyone else is out hurt. Uh, Ribery, I, I really don't mind from 5.2K. 6K is a little bit too much for me for Surge. Just not really where I'm looking to go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Greska could see more minutes. Renato Sanchez is coming back from injury. <clears throat> Excuse me. But really, the, uh, the main play for me for this slate on either site is going to be... Uh, Yavi Martinez on uh, Byron for only 3.3k over here. And what makes him so valuable on FanDuel is that he is a 
priced or excuse me designated as a defender playing as a midfielder now there isn't really a whole lot to do on Fandle with two game slates so i'm not really as interested as playing those <clears throat> excuse me as i am necessarily the four game slate i'm very mu- I'm very more interested in playing the four game slate so yeah i think martinez makes a lot of sense here from 3.3k and <clears throat> i'm sorry if you're looking for the uh the double whammy here from Byron, you can go uh, James Rodriguez and Javi Martinez in cash together. And even with Kimmich uh, from only 5.8K, he was playable and viable from 6.8K against just as tough opposition. So I'm not too concerned about playing him from 5.8K, especially if... um, Especially if all these other names are out this late. Uh... Kimmich should have exclusive set pieces rights on all the set crosses, set pieces. So I have really no issue with that. And and finally, if you're really uncomfortable with playing all three Byron players in cash, I don't blame you. That's really Byron heavy, especially in a game where they're only going to get one goal, um, especially where they're away at Liverpool. I think I would rate them... Uh, Martinez won for the salary relief and his solid floor from the midfield. Uh, two, James Rodriguez, if it looks like he's going to get 90 minutes. And three, Kimmich. Kimmich and Rodriguez are kind of interchangeable for me, though, depending on how the lineups look. Um, so, yeah, I think this is really the good way to start your cash build so far as getting to pay and Martinez in there. Um, both of them should see 90 minutes and both of them have an incredible floor. Uh, now, finally, in GPP, if you want to use some Lewandowski, I have absolutely no issue. I could see him running into two pounds. I, I, I feel like someone this late is going to get two penalty shot goals, whether it's going to be Messi or Lewandowski. The reason I feel this is uh, because... There's so many players this slate who see very exclusive penalty shot rights and have scored a lot of penalty shots this Champions League. And with VAR now implemented, we may even see more penalty shots just because everything's uh, play call happy right now. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm very pro set pieces this slate. I think they could, uh, especially penalty shots. I think they could play a huge role. Uh, they necessarily didn't last slate. I'm I'm expecting an uptick. So if you want to chase the Messi from last slate, if you want to chase that in GPP, I can think of worse. Uh, but I I think there's better cash plays. Uh, for example, uh, Depay and Martinez and maybe even James Rodriguez. Uh, but in GPP from 8.2K, Lewandowski could just as easily fall into uh, set pieces here. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit more on the Liverpool side. But uh, yeah, uh, GPP, keep uh, Lewandowski, GPP, get Javi Martinez into your cash cards for Byron. Now, Liverpool, very interesting situation for Liverpool. One way or another here, they're going to be extremely valuable. Uh, whether it's Allison getting a clean cheat from 5.1K and 3 to 5 saves... Uh, and you can take Martinez and Allison in the cash card if you like at the same time. Uh, I have no issue with that because you really don't need Martinez to score a goal or get an assist for him to pay off. Now, conversely, I don't really suggest taking Kimmich. Uh, it, or let me say, James Rodriguez is an absolute no with Allison. Kimmich is someone you can get away with less, but at the same time, Kimmich's salary demands a ceiling, which would conversely demand Allison not doing as well. So... Uh, from 5.1K, you need Allison to do fairly well, which I do think he can do for either format this slate uh, from 5.1K. Now, defensively, it's tough. Trent Alexander-Arnold's coming back from injury. Other other than that, I think he would make a really smart play. Uh, there's a big issue that uh, Van, Van Dyke's uh, suspended, so uh, he won't be playing this slate. That means that uh, someone like Fabino is going to have to drop back and play center back uh, w- with uh, Matip, which in the past has yielded very substandard results. In particular, if Trent Alexander-Arnold still isn't a full 90 minutes to go, James Milner will probably end up dropping back and playing right back, which has been equally uh, resoundingly bad for clean sheets for Liverpool. Like, really bad. So... I don't necessarily see a clean sheet happening this late for Liverpool uh, because they're so makeshift at the back and they've been letting in so many goals uh, recently as well. So 
that isn't necessarily the place I'm looking this late. That isn't to say, again, the center back goal can't happen from Matip or something random. But at the same time, uh, I just don't feel like chasing the clean sheet this this game. Uh, if, if you want to, I think there's worse plays than Allison at home, that's for sure. Uh, because he's going to see some shots, but the defense uh, is so bad that those shots are probably going to be goals. Now, furthermore, in the midfield, there just isn't really a lot for me to look at until you get up to the forwards. Um, hard not to take Sal when he sub sent when he sub 10k on a DraftKings, so I have no issue with that, especially with Noor and Byron's shabby record. I also really don't mind uh, jumping on some Sadio Mane from 8.1K. That salary range is really interesting to me. And honestly, if it was GPP, I don't mind game stacking this game with Lewandowski and Sadio Mane. I wouldn't go Lewandowski and Salah because I think you're at that point taking on too much ownership in GPP. Where uh, in GPP, Mane is kind of like a neat little pivot with Lewandowski in there at the same time. If he gets a penalty shot... You're absolutely flying from goals on either side of that from little to no ownership uh, com combined or by themselves. So Salah isn't a bad play. I do like him, but I prefer Sadio Mane uh, for GPP. <clears throat> Firmino is also a really interesting play for me at 7.5K. Um, too cheap. He necessarily doesn't have the floor. But again, if he falls on the goal, you're flying from 7.5K. Uh, so yeah. I want to say Liverpool 3-1 win here, probably closer to a 2-1 win, uh, but I think it can go 2-1 either way. I see one of these two teams scoring two goals and uh, the other team not scoring more than once. So that's, uh, that's my take from that game. I'll say 2-1 Liverpool. Next game on the slate, we have Man City traveling to Schalke. Uh, another really interesting game. Uh, now, this is on a Wednesday. Uh, so, these are the next set of games for the Wednesday games. It's uh, really interesting when Man City traveled to Germany. Uh, a lot of history there. Pep was the manager of Bayern for a really long time. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne grew up playing for Wolfsburg uh, in the German League. So, uh, he that's where he made his mark. So, yeah, it's uh, really interesting whenever they make trips to Germany because they don't always do as well as they should. Uh, so, yeah, I'm not really interested in the wing backs of Man City, but I'm very interested in the center backs. Laporte has just been stepping up his game consistently in excellent form, hoping to see him play 90 minutes this slate. Man City did play Newport on uh, the weekend in the F FA Cup, which they won 4-1. Uh, David Silva saw some time, but he was the only player solidly of the midfield to see time. So I expect Kevin De Bruyne to see a lot of time here. Here's the issue for Man City. Um, away from home, they've been consistently bad in Champions League. And I, I don't mean consistently poor, consistently not as good. I mean consistently bad away from home. And their salaries on top of their ownership is going to demand a lot of... Uh, this is a really interesting slate for ownership. It's it's going to be very top heavy. Like you have all sorts of really high end names. It wouldn't surprise me to see Mares, the most expensive of the bunch, get a full ninety minutes here. Uh, and you really need from nine point four k him to finish as one of the top raw points players of the slate. And while Schalke isn't very good, they are at the same time uh, aren't necessarily as bad as. Uh, some of the other matchups here this slate. Now, it's tough finding City players with their salaries because that's going to narrow you down to some really tough scripts where you in GPP may end up just in 3v3s or 4v4s with other people, especially if you stack any kind of City play. So, yeah, I uh, I don't mind Aguero uh, in GPP from 10.1K. I think he's going to be a little bit lesser owned than he should be, and he's playing really well at the moment, really, really well. Um, he should see 90 minutes. Uh, Gabriel Jesus saw 90 minutes uh, against Newport on the weekend, so they should go back to Aguero for 90 minutes this midweek uh, for the trip to Germany, and he he's uh, excellent. Uh, I have no issues with him. Uh, but, yeah, it's tough. Um I want to say Man City are going to score four goals. Obviously, that's always the, the fun take. But the, the real question is where. Um, so, 
I do like the idea of Sterling being so cheap from 8.8K, but he's also not as good away from home as he has been at home. Uh, I think if I was to go anywhere, it'd probably be Kevin De Bruyne, uh, maybe David Silva. I wouldn't necessarily take either of them in cash because they're too expensive. But for GPP, I think you can go uh, on e with either of those two. Any of them, really. You can't really necessarily go bad. It all de depends on how they line up the slate and how their bench looks. If it looks like Mars is going to get 90 minutes, you're probably going to have to roll with him in cash because he's going to have exclusive set pieces. Or conversely, Sané. Uh, if he's looking like it, uh, if there's not really any center midfield subs, you may want to roll with Kevin De Bruyne because you know he's going to get 90 minutes. David Silva probably isn't. Uh, so again, it's tough. It's really, really tough. Their wing backs aren't offering anything. Their center backs offer more than their wing backs. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, not jumping head over heels on Man City this late, but. I can't say they're not going to score four goals because they're Man City, even away from home. I do see this finishing something more along the lines of 4-2. So, I'd probably avoid Farman uh, or Nubel, whoever gets the nod, uh, just for the simple fact that City are too explosive, even away from home. Uh, their defense, while consistent, is injured and kind of like in the Liverpool situation, which draws me more onto Aguero and trying to continue his high ceiling games that he's been putting out as of late. Uh, yeah, you can get away with some Calgary from 4.7K. I'd probably keep it to GPP just because it is someone that I'm not necessarily confident can consistently put out a floor. Uh, so yeah, GPP from 4.7 K him and Terrier wouldn't be the two worst options. If you're looking for some really cheap guys in GPP, uh, Sané has been equally interesting. Uh, he gets a lot of his points, uh, from defensive. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to worry about him putting a ton of offensive out. So you can go on him, uh, and hope for, uh, a little bit of output in that sense. He's been playing a lot of midfield too. Uh, but yeah, um, off is really interesting up front. Isn't my favorite play of the slate. Probably in GPP you can get away with him from 6.1k. Uh, but definitely not nothing for cash in this game really as a whole. Maybe if a Man City winger is looking like they're going to get exclusive set pieces for 90 minutes. Uh, I definitely think... Uh, Aguero isn't playing GPP, maybe 4.2K, or four, excuse me, 4.2 final score. Uh, but at the same time, I could just as easily see this being like a 2-1 a Man City snooze fest. Uh, I, I don't necessarily see Man City losing, but I don't see them getting a clean sheet either. So uh, let's say 2-1 uh, Man City win. Final game of the slate. We have Juventus traveling to Atletico Madrid. So this is the banger. This is the real deal of the slate. Now, here's why. If you would like to read back or watch back of any content basically I've ever made over the last couple of years, it's, it's consistently gone over the fact that both Juve and Atletico Madrid as teams don't have ceilings. Uh, this is old news now. This isn't something that is a sharp play anymore. Juve's, despite having excellent floors and having the opportunity to score 20 points from those floors, very rarely score more than two goals a game. And Atletico, in the same boat, rarely score more than two goals a game and are consistently one of the best defensive teams in Europe, uh, in all of Europe. Uh, you can basically rely on Atletico Madrid to either get a clean sheet or keep the score really, really low. So this, again, very old news. Both these facts are very old news. Now, flip that, and we have this season where Atletico hasn't been as good at keeping the clean sheets and Chesney is a poor man's, or I should say a rich man's, Wayne Hennessy from Crystal Palace. Not a very good keeper. So, Ronaldo and Griezmann, I think, make a ton of sense this game, this slate to game stack. Uh, in the game, whether cash or GPP, getting them both into the same cards is going to be paramount for the slate. Whether it's going to be Ronaldo and his insane shot counts that he's going to put on net, 
or it's Griezmann and his absolute exclusive set pieces rights uh, against a team who uh, aren't immune to giving up uh, whether penalty shots or corners or free kicks. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> a lot of this depends on Koke. If Koke's out, get Griezmann into your cards this slate from only 9.3K. He's not going to be highly enough owned. He's still going to be owned, but not into the upper echelon of ownership that we're going to find a lot of these other names. Now, across the board for both these teams, especially Juve, I think, uh, are l loaded with different options. Uh, Non-defensive, mind you. Uh, Fade Lamar, he's just not a good DFS player, period. Just don't do it. Diablo, uh, you can absolutely play him either format if he's getting the start. Um... With Corrado and Douglas Costa out, Bernardeschi should be getting 90 minutes from only 5.4K. Uh, really hard to turn down in GPP. From one goal, you don't need too much there at all. Uh, the defensive options, I'll play 90 minutes again. So you're, you're getting really good bang for your buck here across the board. And uh, again, uh, you can jump on potentially some Mandu Mandzukic, uh, Vero Mandzukic, um, not necessarily the same kind of ceiling nor floor play, but his ownership will be low enough. Basically, I'll just out it here. I think there's going to be penalty shots for both teams this game. And Ronaldo and Griezmann are both going to get a penalty shot. Griezmann potentially twice. Juve's been lacking in terms of defensive stability later on the season, mostly due to their age uh, and their advanced fatigue levels. So it isn't necessarily a team that I'm looking to be the sharpest defensive team of the entire slate in Juve and potentially away from home uh, give up a penalty shot or two. And the same can be said for Atletico where they just haven't been the same defensive team this season. Uh, so it isn't necessarily... Uh, I. The main script I think a lot of people are going to chase with the square chase this slate is that this is going to be a really low scoring game. And on the contrary, it'll end up being really high scoring. That's my take. Uh, I think it's going to be 3-2 Juventus or 3-2 Atletico over Juventus one way or the other. Uh, if I was doing over-unders, I would definitely take the over on 3.5. Um, just uh, the value that offers this slate uh, is incredible too. So, yeah, it, you can convert that into that take of a three over three and a half into the salaries on these sites to notice that these sites don't expect this to go over three and a half and while they have consistently done that it will only take the slightest bit of luck for them to have to start scoring on each other um atletico want to host champions league they want to get to the final so I think they may abandon even a little bit their defensive style to go for this if they're losing. Uh, they Especially at home, the away goals count. So I don't see Atletico just accepting a 1-1 draw. They're going to go for this. They're, and Griezmann will be the vocal point of that. So getting Ronaldo and Griezmann into your cards this slate is absolutely crucial. Uh, I would... If I was to go with the keeper of either side, it would definitely be Oblak, but I would definitely recommend neither of those keepers. Keepers are tough this slate. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm generally going with Lopez where I can and uh, maybe getting some uh, Kimmich uh, into cash uh, if I'm able. But uh, other than that, yeah, it, I think a lot of my ownership in both formats this slate will be drawn to the final game in the hopes that most people will be fading and expecting a low-scoring game, which they normally do produce. Uh, and we'll see some penalty shots and a lot of set pieces and a lot of goals uh, where a lot of people will be expecting those goals to be coming on Tuesday. So, yeah, last last slate, my my take was keepers on Tuesday. My my uh, take this slate is goal scorers on Wednesday. So, hunt the goals on Wednesday. So, yeah, uh, that is the slate. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Uh, Rob Diamond is my name. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Rotopros.com. Get over. Check us out. 
uh, top right hand corner, hit the articles, drop down. We have all sorts of free content throughout all the different sports for you to check out and get tips on. I should have an article hopefully out here uh, for the Champions League on both days uh, to give us uh, some news and notes, uh, some different uh, inside takes too. So yeah, uh, good luck everyone. Hopefully see you at the top. Uh, and as always, much love. Take care.